Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm really excited to do. It's going to be my makeup monthly for the month of March. So if you're new to my makeup monthlies, I'll have my playlist linked down below, but this is where I go over all of my favorite products from the month, the products that failed me, and the ones that I thought were just okay. I also do have a creator spotlight to share this month as always, and why don't we go ahead and jump into it. I never know what I think when I curl my hair. She's kind of crazy today. That's okay. All right, so jumping into it, I'm gonna start off with the fill category and then work our way towards better news. This is from Mac. <laughs> we saw this coming, right? If you guys caught the video where I was trying this out. This is their Fleur Real Highlight Powder. This came out in their flower collection that they just released, Boom Boom Bloom. Yes, I knew it had like a boom, boom, boom. <laughs> like that was what was playing in my head. So this is one of the highlight powders that came out in this, in the collection. And I had this in a trying new makeup video and I was testing it out. And wow, was I ever disappointed on it. You might still be able to see from mine that there was an overspray on the highlight. So if you see kind of like these shiny parts here on the edges of the highlight, and then you see a matte powder in here, there was just an overspray on it, making it look like a really nice highlighter. When in fact, it was just a matte powder that is in here so uh, I don't consider this a highlight and I the overspray part really makes me angry because it just looked so eye-catching and so like it was gonna be so like glorious on the skin and then to literally rub your finger in that like as I was going to swatch it I was rubbing my finger in it and I was like what's happening here that was a super disappointing for me so this is a product that I'm just I'm not gonna reach for um, you know maybe you could wear it as like a blush or blush topper or something like that but this definitely is not a highlight and again the overspray I just don't really understand the point of that to be honest uh, okay so next up a fail this is one that I really didn't want it to be a fail, and I've like kept trying them, kept trying them. It's actually on my lips today. I did uh, film this look, if anyone is curious about it. This is from Friday's video, which is a try to get ready with me, and I will have it linked down below, but I do discuss some pretty, um, I don't think I went like too, too, well, there's a little bit in there, but I talk about like mental health and depression. I've just been kind of having a rough few weeks here, and I just shared a little bit of what I've been going through and how I've been trying to deal with it the best I can. Um, so that was Friday's video, but I really wanted to keep trying these because I really want to like them, but I just don't. It's from ColourPop. These are the So Juicy Plumping Glosses. I definitely like a lot from ColourPop, but as with every brand, there's always going to be hits and misses. When they were coming out with the glosses, I was really curious to try them out. I've been getting more into lip glosses lately and finding some that I really enjoy. I have a gloss that's going to be in the favorite section coming up here, but these I just didn't like. Again, I had them in a trying new makeup video, and I swatched a few different ones on my lips because um, they came out with you know a variety of, of shades and I just wasn't loving them they were really goopy on the lips and they just kind of did this weird thing and it's it's happening with this one I've noticed that if I put a lip liner down it can help a little bit uh, it also does help if I exfoliate my lips because sometimes I can have dry lips or like flaky lips and I feel like that kind of gets emphasized with this gloss but I don't have to do that with so many other glosses I don't need to be finicky with them and they just they work just fine so i think it's just more of the like consistency of these glosses that i don't love they're just a little bit too thick on my lips a little bit too glossy they are more on the sticky side as well like my hair gets stuck in them uh and i don't love that but i just feel like it does this weird kind of goopy gloppy thing in the center of my lips that isn't very attractive I've been seeing so many people say how much they love these and you know they're affordable at like seven dollars I think um, you know from ColourPop and like I said there's a lot of different shades out there it does give you a plumping effect you know I can kind of feel that tingling it's not too much but I also don't notice my lips looking like extremely juicy after I wear these I think I have other glosses that you know can give the illusion of my lips being bigger um, so I, these just I, I really wanted to wear it one more time because I was like maybe this is gonna be the time that I changed my mind and it's not. The shade that I have on, I believe it's called Beechwood and it's my favorite shade out of the ones that I've tried. I've tried a clear one, I've tried a light pink one um, and then I've tried this darker one in Beechwood. It's my favorite because I feel like it kind of helps mask the weirdness that it does with my particular lips but it's still not something like after I've tried them you know, several times here now and decided that they're not my favorite, they're not the gloss I'm going to be reaching for, I really don't see myself reaching for them again. They're just not a favorite. Again, I know so many people are liking these. If you know, I named off certain aspects that you're like, that's what I really like in a lip gloss, then you'll probably really like these. And like I said, they're affordable, but for me, they're just a personal miss. And 
I just couldn't get on with them. I'm so bummed about that, but oh well, such is life. Uh, all right, so next up, I have a skincare product. Oh, I really wanted to like this one because I haven't tried much from the brand and they did send this to me in PR. So the Mac was sent to me in PR. The color pop was also sent to me in PR and this item was also sent to me in PR. So, uh, I did the, what did I do? The assumptions, uh, video that's been kind of going around. And one of the assumptions was like, I don't talk badly about items that I get because I'm afraid to be taken off of PR lists. And I'm like, if you watch my makeup monthlies, almost everything I mentioned in the fail category is sent to me in PR <laughs> like because I probably like I feel like I know what I want to buy and what works for me and you know what I'll get on with I'm very particular about the makeup I buy I don't just buy to buy makeup I buy things because I think I'm gonna really like them and really want to use them so a lot of times my fails are items that are sent to me and it just is what it is man like I mean bummer but is what it is so peter thomas roth sent this over and I was really curious to try it it says it's the green relief leaf uh, therapeutic sleep cream skin protect it so it has the cannabis uh, sativa seed oil which is very large in just the entire beauty industry right now makeup and skincare there's a retinoid complex uh, topical melatonin uh, oatmeal it says it's a renewing night moisturizer so it has a bunch of different claims on it but it's supposed to be really good for soothing the skin. So right off the bat, I want to say that I, I also, I don't think this product is geared towards my particular skin type or my, the needs that I have in my skincare. So again, definitely makeup is very personal preference, but skincare even more. So when I mention a skincare as a fail, I try to give why it didn't work for me, my skin type, maybe who it might work for. Um, the big thing about this one is that it's supposed to be a calming, smoothing moisturizer. And I've seen them post, you know, kind of like before and after pictures from people who are using it on a regular basis. And a lot of people who seem to be really liking this one is people who deal with a lot of redness on the skin. And that is simply not me. That's not one of my skincare needs at this moment or or really has ever been uh, I still wanted to try it out just to see what I thought of it um, but it says so it's a calming smoothing moisturizer it's supposed to smooth the look of fine lines wrinkles uneven skin tone and texture I mean I definitely have fine lines and wrinkles uh, it says that it's supposed to help revitalize skin's appearance while you sleep. So it has this little pump on it, and this guy is $65, so this is pretty darn expensive, but it has this, this pump on it, and it comes out green. The One of the biggest things of, about this particular item for me that I did not get on with is the smell of it. It has this kind of, like, earthy, like, dirt something smell that I'm just it's a very like natural product which is great but I just didn't enjoy that scent and especially just being on my face and you know, all that I felt like the scent really kind of stuck around there's a lot of skincare products that you know you can smell it as you pump it in your hand and as you blend it in but then once it's kind of absorbed into your skin you don't smell it anymore i feel like the scent really stayed around for a long time and i didn't enjoy it and because this is a sleeping cream i've been trying it out at night and i felt like i could even uh, keep smelling it on like my pillowcase and such like it was kind of always just kind of lingering around and sticking around and i didn't enjoy that i'm not a huge fragrance person in my in my cosmetic and my skincare but this one just really I I just couldn't really get on with it also I didn't really notice anything you know kind of kind of going on with my skin again you know I know a lot of people are saying that they like it for their redness which I don't deal with but even when it comes to like my fine lines um, uh, you know wrinkles things like that I, I wasn't really noticing a difference there and I think just with my sleeping creams I especially because I have dry skin I like something that's pretty hydrating and that when I wake up in the morning I still feel you know hydrated or my skin looks glowy or something like that's kind of what I've been preferring lately when it comes to my skincare that I'm doing in the evenings. So I just didn't notice enough with it uh, and I didn't love the the scent of it and I didn't love that it kind of was sticking around for, for a long time. So again, I really, I don't think this product is necessarily geared towards me, which that, you know, just happens. Maybe I said something that you're like, oh, that would be perfect for me. Then uh, you, you go, you go on with your bad self. Uh, but this one was just a miss for me. I'm going to move over to the fine category. These are products that I, you know, enjoy 
boy I've been liking, but it would just be a lie if I said that they were an absolute favorite of mine, but I still wanted to give my thoughts on them since I've been trying them out. So ColourPop did also send over one of their lippy scrubs, and I started trying it, and I was like, oh, you know what? This is this is actually really good. I do like lip scrubs. Like here and now, I will find myself reaching for it. Like I said, I do have dry lips. Uh, and then sometimes I just want to get that, you know, I just want to exfoliate kind of the dead skin off my lips and have them look nice once again. I do like liquid lips and matte lips. So it really does help to keep them kind of as smooth as I can. So I have a couple of lip scrubs that I keep around. But I've noticed once I started trying this one out, it's the only one that I've been using. Uh, I think it's because... I love the scent of it. So this one is in By the Bushel, and I love the scent of it. You need such a tiny amount. I mean, it probably looks like I haven't even used this at all, but I've been pretty faithfully using this two to three times a week, I would say. I just always have it sitting by my laptop, on my desk, uh, and then whenever I just kind of feel like that, Mm, you probably need to do a little something here with your lips. This is what I've been reaching into. Again, it just smells so good. It doesn't really leave any sort of like shade you know it looks real light pink in the in the jar here it doesn't really leave any sort of like shade on me you do get like the the scrub you know hanging around your lips for a while so i make sure to put this on when i'm not about to you know apply lipstick or something like that it's usually in the morning or in the evening after i've done my skincare uh, that i will put this on and just kind of let it naturally fade away but i've been really liking this it's not an absolute favorite um or, it's, or anything like that, but I still think that is pretty good and I've been quite liking it. So that's the ColourPop Lippy Scrub. Uh, some skincare that I've been trying out. I had the uh, a new serum that I put into my AM skincare routine to try out and this is from number seven. This is the Early Defense Glow Activating Serum. It says glowing, healthier looking skin in one week. So in the morning I cleanse my skin and then I apply a serum and I got this one sent from number seven. I was like, you know what? I will test this one out. I think that it's okay. I didn't feel like I noticed any extraordinary results from this. I still prefer my Drunk Elephant C Firm a Day Serum and that's what I've gone to um, since I, I tried this one out for a month. Um, it was what I was trying out in the month of March and I was like, you know what? It was all right, but I don't feel like I noticed anything enough or like that glowing healthy skin. Like I, I just thought it was decent. I thought it made my skin nice and soft, which was nice, especially for the AM. Um, you know, it made my skin nice and like smooth and soft, especially if I was going to be doing makeup really quickly after my skincare routine. I quite like that, but I didn't, again, I just didn't notice a lot of results. And I will say also that I am almost, like it is almost gone. The last couple times that I was using it, I was really having to like shake it and uh, you know, like start to squeeze from the bottom and, and squeeze all the way out because I almost used this all the way up. So I feel like I went through it a lot quicker than I've gone through my other serums. They seem to stick around a lot longer. So um, number seven can be kind of like mid-range when it comes to prices. And you can also, I believe that they're still available at Target, but this one, it was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't bad and I enjoyed using it, but I just like to see a little bit a little bit more if you will okay so milk makeup reformulated their lipsticks recently and i was super curious to try these out because i really like the milk makeup lip colors in the past cream has been a favorite shade of mine since I received it, I've continued to rave about it on my channel and I started to get a little bit worried because I noticed when I was wearing it and wanting to link it, it was either not available on the website or it was half off and all the lipsticks were on sale. So I was like, oh no, are they getting rid of their lipsticks? They were just uh, repackaging and also reformulating the lipsticks. So this is the new packaging, which is super sleek. I think that it looks really good. So it's, it's all white now and it has more of this, um, you know, magnetic cap. And I also think it's nice because you have the shade name on the bottom and then you also have it on the side which I think is very cool I don't like this formula as much as I like the other one though which I'm so sad about because I like the other one a lot but I also feel like this is kind of an unpopular opinion because when they came out a lot of people were saying how much they didn't like it and I was one of the very few saying like oh no I really like this formula and other people are saying it was too dry but it was more it's it, it's more of a matte lipstick but when you applied it it was still creamy but then it would look matte on the lips and it would really stay in place and I really enjoyed that not a lot of transfer with it I was like yes I think a lot of people are going to like this one a lot and I've already been seeing some youtubers really raving about it it's still nice and creamy when you apply it but 
it, it almost just looks more creamy on the lips. It kind of lost some of that matte finish that you got with the other formula, and that's what I really liked because even though I am getting into glosses, I still prefer liquid lipsticks, and I still prefer matte finish, uh, you know, regular lipsticks. It's just been my preference. So I wish we still got more of a mattifying effect. These actually kind of remind me more formula-wise of the, the Becca Ultimate Love lipsticks that have come out, and I mentioned those last month in my Makeup Monthly in the fine category so I'm not surprised that you know I just think that these are okay they just they're just very creamier on the lips but they also do transfer and I feel like it can get a little bit messy you know I'm that person that when I put my lipstick on I just really want it to stay I don't want to worry about getting it on my chin or like it you know transferring or moving around and that's what I feel from this one too I will say that you get like really decent color payoff with it like it you know like one swipe you get a lot going on this is the shade deuces which I have worn a couple times so you get a nice you know a nice amount of color lots of pigmentation uh, but I felt like I had to reapply this more than I did with the other formula. And again, I miss more of that matte finish. Uh, and I just feel like it kind of kind of transfers a bit more. So love the new packaging and all of that. And I do quite like the shade Deuces. I think it's pretty. Um, so it's not like an absolute fail for me because I still think it's a nice lipstick. And I, I think a lot of people will like this and kudos on the packaging. I just wish it was a little bit more similar to the older formula. I'm not going to lie. Okay, and then the last product that I have in the fine category, this is a new concealer, and this is from Estee Lauder, so this one was also sent over to me. This is the Double Wear Instant Fix Concealer. So on one side, you have this Hydra Prep, which looks like so. so it's a little applicator here with the liquid, and then on the other side, you have the concealer. So the hydrating side is supposed to just be, um, you know, it's kind of like a serum-y type, and it's supposed to help to hydrate and just kind of like get your skin ready for the concealer, have it lay on top really nice and then on the other side you have the concealer and it has more of a flat paddle on each end the shade I am wearing is 2W, which is light medium, and I think that it's a pretty good shade match. I do have it on my under eyes today. I've worn this one several times. I definitely do like the hydrating side, actually, and I thought that would be a little bit more of like a gimmicky thing, like do I really need that? And the first couple times I tried the concealer, I actually didn't use it, and then I was like, you need to try that side out too if you're going to review this product, girlfriend, get it together. And I actually do like it. I, I can see the difference that it makes with how smooth it feels to lay the concealer down and how easy it is to blend the concealer out. I do deal with drier under eyes and you know, I just turned 32 so I have you know some fine lines and wrinkles going on on my under eyes and, and you know all that fun stuff. So I actually do like this side more than I thought that I was going to. Now, I think that's a good thing. And then for the actual concealer, I like the concealer. I think it's nice. It is more of a hydrating concealer as well, whether you use it with the prep or whether you use it on its own. And it's very, very lightweight. It's very easy to blend out, which I think is great. But the coverage isn't the coverage that I tend to prefer, which is why this one's falling in the fine category for me. I like more of a full coverage concealer that's really covering every Thing, my dark circles I don't sleep very well so I like a concealer that's really going to cover it all and this one is just more on the lighter side for me again I think it has a lot of pros um, you know it's just it's so lightweight like when the first time I ever applied it I was like I think I'm really gonna like this and I'm blending it out and it's blending so smoothly and I'm like yes yes and then the the, the biggest drawback for me is just that it's just not the coverage that I prefer. It's more of like a light to medium coverage. I noticed that it's not the most long wearing concealer either. I noticed after, you know, the eight hour mark or so that it kind of starts to break up a little bit. Um, so it's not the most long wearing either, but I think that it has a lot of pros, just a few cons. And for me personally, they're like the bigger cons um, for me when it comes to a concealer, but still thought it was pretty good. So still wanted to mention it. Alrighty, before I jump into my favorite products, I do like to do a creator spotlight every single month. I just think this is a really fun thing to do. But the creator that I have for April is Jamie Fetchmuller. And I always say this every month. I'm like, I should have, when I'm emailing with them, I should have asked, how do I pronounce your last name? Because I don't want to say it wrong. Uh, but this is Jamie, and I just think that she is such a gem. So I actually met Jamie last uh, October when I, I think it was October when I went to Generation Beauty in New York uh, I was I was walking around with Ashley and, and Molly and um, you know she came up to us and she was talking to us and she was so nice and her mom was there and her mom was so nice as well uh, and we actually saw her the next day too and we talked
talk to her once again and took some photos and it was just so fun meeting her and talking to her uh, and I actually didn't realize at the time that she had a YouTube channel also uh, but then a, a few weeks later she had made a video on her channel and it was talking about her gen beauty experience and you know the bag that you get but she also mentioned meeting me and how special that was to her and that was really overwhelming uh, I, I can remember watching the video and watching it with my husband and just being so overwhelmed that you know it was a really overwhelming experience anyways it was my first gen beauty I, I wasn't sure what to expect and to have people um, come up and and talk to me like that was was like on another level but then to have someone put it in their YouTube video was just such a special moment. Um, and you know, once I found out that she had a channel, I subscribed and I try to catch as many of her videos as I can. And I just think that, I just think that she's so awesome. We talk a lot over, you know, private DMs too. And I, I think that she's just so nice. And it was such a pleasure meeting her and her mom. Her mom was so sweet too. And uh, yeah, I just highly recommend her channel. She has a lot of, you know, kind of like similar videos to me as well. I know she does a lot of Project Pans and shop my sashes and things like that and I just think that she is so sweet I love talking to her she's very supportive of my channel as well I see her in my comment section a lot which I think is very awesome but uh, yeah I, I think that she's she's a good one here in the YouTube space so I definitely recommend that you check out Jamie's channel we will have her YouTube and also her Instagram linked in my description box and I hope that you'll go check her out and uh, with my creator spotlight I do send out a beauty newsletter every month and it just kind of goes over you know a few of my favorite products some reviews what I'm eyeing what I've purchased you know things like that so it's just a bunch of different beauty related topics in there but then I also do feature a little Q&A with the you know the uh, spotlighted the spotlighted the creator spotlight of the month if you want to catch a little interview with Jamie I will have the link to subscribe to the newsletter down below again I just send one out once a month um, but that is included every month so if you want to get the April one that link will be down there as well to move on to my beauty favorites this brow pencil has like taken me by storm. This is from Sigma Beauty. So Sigma just came out with a huge brow collection. They have a bunch of different products in there. I immediately gravitated to the Fill and Blend brow pencil and I am so impressed with this. I have had a hard time putting it down since the moment I started trying it. I was like, no, you have other brow pencils. Like there's some I'm trying to finish up and you know, I have some in my shop, my stash. I was like, use those. But I keep going back and keep going back to the Sigma brow pencil. I use the shade medium. So you have the spoolie on one end and then you just have a really precise pencil on the other. It reminds me of like the benefit precisely my brow, um, the CoverGirl brow pencil that I enjoy so much. But this brow pencil from Sigma, I just feel like it's so quick. It's so easy. Easy. my brows look like this is one of those brow pencils that my brows look good every single time I do my brows with it I have been so impressed with this one so I definitely wanted to mention this one from Sigma they did send this over to me because I am a Sigma affiliate I do have my discount code which is Samantha uh, which is an affiliate code but it gets you 10% off your orders on Sigma and if you're looking for a new brow pencil I highly recommend that one from Sigma because I think it is fantastic uh, speaking of CoverGirl, I know I've seen a lot of people raving about this one, but I'm going to as well. They sent over their new Exhibitionist mascara, and I was pretty leery about it. Not gonna lie, because CoverGirl mascaras I've just never really gotten into in the past for whatever reason. They just don't really seem to impress me. But I tried this out, and I, the first time I tried it was in a video, and I was like, wow, that was actually pretty good. Like, I wasn't really expecting, you know, much from this mascara, but you know what? Well, I'm impressed. And I kind of immediately was like, you know, I put it on my list of items that I'm going to review for my makeup monthly. And I, I kind of put it like when I try something out, I'll put it in the category that I think it's going to end up in. And then it kind of moves around from there. So I immediately put it in my fine category. I was like, yeah, I think this is going to be pretty good. I'm, you know, probably going to recommend it. And then I kept using it and I kept using it. And I kept using it and it kept going in my travel bag and I kept using it and I was like oh you are going to have to reconsider that fine category because why do you keep using the mascara if you only think it's okay <laughs> so this has been so good it totally took me by surprise so again the CoverGirl exhibition exhibitionist so you have kind of the thicker wand here I think that it's really nice for volume but it also gives me good length it's the mascara that I have on today it's the mascara that I've been wearing so much recently I do not get flaking or transfer with this which I appreciate so much and yeah I just can't stop reaching for it so CoverGirl exhibitionist is a good one uh, moving on to a foundation that I've been loving. This is from Wander Beauty. This is the Nude Illusion Liquid Foundation. 
Okay, Wonder Beauty sent this over to me, and I am kind of newer to Wonder Beauty. Hadn't tried a ton from them. I actually, I think I first tried their products because of Gen Beauty. There was a couple items in our swag bag, and, um, you know, I was pretty impressed. And then they sent over a couple more, and one was this foundation, and I wanted to try it because I had just recently seen Kathleen Lights raving about this one. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. I tried it out in a uh, first impressions video once again, and I was like, wait, why does my skin look so fantastic? What's going on here? So the only like real con to me is the applicator. I'm not a fan of the like giant doe foot applicator for foundations. And I feel like it's kind of hard to get out because like the stopper in here, like it really stops. So like there's been times where I've really like flung it out and foundations kind of like flicked out of it. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> trying to make this house clean for the next people that are coming in here. Like trying not to make a mess right now. But sometimes it gets a little bit messy. And I also feel like I have to really kind of um, apply a lot of the foundation, uh, just kind of like dipping back in and dipping back in versus just having to pump some out onto a sponge. Uh, but it, that doesn't matter to me because this is still such a nice foundation. I have the shade light medium. It says a weightless fluid foundation formulated for full coverage with a natural radiant finish. I think that's one of my favorite parts about this foundation is the finish to it. I do have it on my skin today. It just, it does. It gives a very natural finish to it. It's not too mattifying. Just that perfect natural finish that I enjoy so much I do think that you can get it up to the full coverage again like I said I feel like you kind of need to apply a lot of it to get it there but if you prefer more of a medium coverage which is normally what I like um, you can kind of manipulate it that way or you can add more product and and blend it out I also think this is really nice and long wearing I like the coverage to it I like the finish to it I've been so impressed again I just keep reaching for this one and keep reaching for this one I will say that I like this one more with a sponge I applied it today with a brush because I was trying a few new brushes from eco tools and I didn't love it as much uh, blending it out that way uh, because I feel like kind of how you have to apply it with the doe foot you kind of want to work a little bit quicker or else it can start to dry down a little bit. And so I feel like that mixed with using a brush, I just, I think a damp sponge is the way to go with this one. And then it looks totally beautiful, but I have been so, so impressed with this one. Definitely recommend from Wonder Beauty. Another drugstore product, this one really surprised me. Uh, this is a setting powder. This is from Revlon. It's the Photo Ready Candid Anti-Pollution Setting Powder. So I tried a couple of the Revlon products in a trying new makeup video and some of them I thought were okay and some of the complexion products, the foundation and the concealer, I'm still testing out a few more times because they, the shades that were sent to me were a little bit lighter and it was right before I went on my vacation and then I just felt like I was too tan to wear them and really try, like, try to test them out. So as my tan's been fading, I've been pulling them back in more and trying them some more but the um this is just a translucent setting powder this is what i've been trying out the most of and i am so freaking impressed with this uh i really do like the the packaging on it because when you open it up you just kind of uh pop the tab over here over here it kind of helps maybe a little bit less i mean setting powder is just always messy but i do like the packaging on this one it kind of reminds me of the milk blur powder but the powder is so just like smooth. It's really, really finely milled. Uh, I haven't been getting flashback with this one and I've been wearing it a lot. I wore it uh, when I went to my friend's wedding and we were doing flash photography pretty much the entire night and I did not have flashback on my under eyes, which I was so impressed with. I feel like it's a nice smoothing uh, under, eye con uh, under eye powder um, to put on over my concealer. I don't feel like it cakes up too much. I've been really impressed with this one and I swear it is reminding me of a high-end uh, powder and I've literally been testing my high-end powders to try to see what I'm thinking of but I can't find one that I think it's super super similar to so I'm just wondering if I think that because I feel like it should be like a high-end price does that make sense like with a lot of setting powders when they came to like drugstore affordable ones I wasn't a huge fan of I found myself really preferring high-end I just felt like they were just a little bit better you know so I think maybe that's where I'm like no this has this you know it's reminding me of a high-end one I think it, it just feels like it should be high-end because it's so good so I highly recommend this one from Revlon uh, I have another skincare product and this one, I was really excited to try this out. This is from First Aid Beauty. This is the Ultra Repair Cannabis and Oat Dry Oil. So this one was sent to me from a First Aid Beauty and I do like to uh, apply oils. I recommended one from Pixie last month, their Rose Oil, I think is a fabulous. But I've also been trying out this one from First Aid Beauty. So you just have the little dropper form here. So it says it's a dry oil and I feel like I, 
can I can get that it's not like super super dry on my skin like once I apply it I, I can't tell that I have an oil on but it's not as like liquidy as oily as some of the other ones like the pixie and almost kind of feels like it sinks into your skin a little bit faster is kind of like what it feels like to me I've been using this at night a lot like before I go to sleep and I've been finding that I just really like it because I wake up in the morning and I still feel like my skin has a little bit of that glow to it um, and I just look a little bit more hydrated and ready to start the day so I've been especially loving this one for like when I'm spending the night at my friends houses and I wake up in the morning and I just feel like I, I just look better so when I'm walking into the kitchen and other friends are there or her husband's there or something we're all like making breakfast I still feel like my skin is like looking good looking ready to go like I don't wake up looking so tired and haggard and all of that um, I haven't had any sort of like um, you know bad issues with this one any sort of like breaking out anything like that so I've been really enjoying this one from first aid beauty and I find myself just continually reaching for it and continually reaching for it even when there's you know the drunk elephant night serum that I want to use or like my really hydrating uh, night cream from oh why can't I think of the name soap and glory I'm just like oh I think I'm actually gonna go for a little oil because I just really enjoy how my skin looks in the morning so would also recommend this one from first aid beauty so I have one more product to finish off and like I said I did want to recommend a lip gloss so these are the new lip glosses from persona cosmetics so persona just released three lip glosses there is honey there is toffee and there is peach and honey is the one that I have been loving the most and yesterday I knew that I was going to be filming this video today so I pulled it out of my purse and currently have no idea where it is <laughs> my life is in shambles most of my office is pretty boxed up at this moment so I don't know maybe it fell into a box I don't know but I'm really flustered because I pulled it out specifically for this video can't find it so that sucks but I do have toffee here because I have also been trying a toffee this one is a bit of a darker gloss I liked honey because it was kind of like that perfect nude gloss for me i have been wearing it in a, quite a few of my videos and like i said it was in my purse because i wear it so much going out but this one right here is the swatch of toffee and i'm super disappointed that i can't find honey now i'm worried that it's gone and i won't find it until i unpack mm. <laughs> that's no fun uh but these glosses are so so good persona cosmetics continues to impress me her liquid lipsticks highlighters palettes i mean that company is just really really impressing me with their releases persona did send over all three glosses to me and i was so excited i immediately grabbed honey it was the the number one that i grabbed out these are so just like smooth on the lips and like what i was saying with color pop is it's just too goopy and it's just too sticky not the ones from persona they're just smooth they just give a beautiful glossy finish to the lips they stick around so well i've been really loving honey with any sort of like darker nude lip liner uh, I just think that it looks so so beautiful. I was wearing toffee. I've worn toffee a couple times But I was just wearing this one the other day I paired it with my dose of colors undressed lip liner, which I've been really uh, Enjoying as I've been testing that one out and I just think that these are so good again I just really like how they feel on the lips and these just impress me so much So I would definitely recommend the lip glosses from persona. I think that they are fabulous uh, but other than that normally in my makeup monthly videos I finish off the video with some book reviews because I am also a book blogger uh, and I'm a published author and I give book recommendations for any of the five star books that I've reviewed throughout the month but unfortunately the month of March was actually a really rough reading month for me I gave a lot of two star reviews on my blog which is a bummer I'm super disappointed that I don't have five star books to review for this month um, but I mentioned this recently my uh, seventh novel has just become available as an audiobook so if you enjoy audiobooks it is available on audible and also on amazon in audio that is the six scarlet i know i've been listening to audiobooks recently um as i've been walking my dog because the weather has been nicer and so i like to listen to something whether it be an audiobook or a podcast i like to listen to something when we're out and about so um if you're interested in audiobooks i will have you know my links down below and hopefully i have a feeling april will be a better month but march for whatever reason and I gave a lot of like two and three star book reviews on my blog so that's a bummer but I know this video these always get so long but I felt like I had a lot of products to talk about this month I hope that you guys enjoyed this video or you found it helpful uh, let me know what you thought of the products that I mentioned down below and as always if you guys did enjoy this video I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go and I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video